Okay, so uh, in this lecture, uh, I am going to introduce you to IC engine fuels. Now, uh, since we are aiming at, uh, uh, let us say, making models and understanding how combustion takes place in petrol engine and how combustion takes place in a diesel engine, uh, because uh, that is the fundamental understanding of how fuels burn inside this uh, particular uh, combustion chamber uh, is of primary importance to make, uh, uh, let us say, viable models uh, and do thermodynamic analysis. Now, as we know that uh, fuels or IC engine fuels are a mixture of many, many components. So, we must understand what we are burning because the fuel quality is not only in terms of the heating value or not only in terms of the amount of heat which it can give, uh, but also there are several other parameters which need to be understood uh, as far as the IC engine fuels are concerned. Uh, so that the overall engine dynamics in terms of uh, its work producing capacity, in terms of its cooling, in terms of uh, let us say the spark timing, in terms of uh, the, the, uh, the carburation process for example or fuel injection process, uh, in terms of the exhaust gas composition, uh, in terms of uh, uh, let us say the, 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 the quality of what is being burnt for example and then the residual, uh, let us say, uh, matter which remains inside the combustion chamber after uh, burning has taken place. Uh, and then in terms of uh, the interaction with the lubrication oil, in terms of uh, the tribological, uh, let us say, health of the engine, in terms of wear and tear of the piston, the piston rings, the connecting rod, in terms of uh, chemical reactions which can occur inside the engine or inside the catalytic reactor uh, uh, when we are doing the exhaust gas after treatment. So, there are enormous n number of parameters on which the quality of the fuel and the different parameters of the fuel will depend. So, in the, uh, or, or, or it, the, the engine performance will depend on the fuel parameters. So, in this lecture, uh, I am going to introduce you and then we will see how the, the, the petrol engine or the spark ignition engine or the SI engine is different uh, or the fuels of which we use in SI engines are different than the fuels which we use in, for example, a diesel engine or let us say a large diesel engine which is like, let us say a marine engine which you have already also seen. So, these fuels they differ in several, several parameters and as I said, if you have to understand the combustion inside these systems, uh, we need to understand a lot of parameters or a lot of let us say physical and chemical characteristics of what we are burning. So, let us look at the IC engine fuels. So, as you know, most road transport vehicles, for example, they operate on liquid fuels derived from petroleum. Uh, the gaseous fuels like methane, propane are also being used in comparatively small amounts, but it is increasing definitely. Uh, as you all know, uh, several large transport uh, systems, let us say transport system in Delhi or in metropolitan cities uh, is now CNG based, for example, compressed natural gas based. Uh, so, there are definite advantages of going to gas, for example, uh, as compared to liquid fuels. So, we will discuss that also in, uh, in greater detail later on. Then, as you all know, petroleum crude contains a lot of compounds, almost like 20 to 30,000 different compounds, uh, mainly of carbon and hydrogen. Uh, also, there are sulfur, nitrogen, oxygen, which is present. And we will see some examples of these fuels uh, and what these uh, added, uh, let us say, uh, uh, more compounds like sulfur compounds or nitrogen compounds or oxygen compounds which are attached with the carbon hydrogen molecules, uh, 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 how do they affect the engine performance for example. Uh, then uh, 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 typical commercial fuel will have about 400 types of compounds, 200, 250 to 300 compounds or even more uh, depending on from which refinery it is coming. Uh, or from which uh, le le let us say outlet you are buying for example and what is the grade of that particular fuel. So, uh, if you see automotive fuels especially because that is the large part of the IC engines uh, usage for example, there are several quality requirements okay, which will uh, affect the engine performance. So, let us enumerate them and go one by one. So, the first is of course, the combustion quality. There are several parameters in combustion quality. Okay. Uh, for example, how does the fuel burn? What is the rate at which the reactions take place so that we get the enthalpy? For example, petrol type of mixtures or, or those who are used in SI engines, for example, what we call as petrol engines, uh, they usually burn uh, pretty rapidly uh, and uh, the combustion characteristics are quite different than let us say diesel. 
uh, fuel. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the combustion quality, uh, there are several parameters which define quality and we will see some of them as we go along. Uh, so, essentially what is the relationship with vehicle performance? For example, better fuel economy can be achieved at a less pollution. Uh, so, as you all know, we define quality in terms of several parameters. One of them, a very common parameter is the octane number, for example, or the cetane number. So, in the next lectures, we will define them also and we will try to understand what is octane number and what is a cetane number. So, the octane numbers are typically index of combustion quality or index of how the fuel burns for example and this is used in relationship to a petrol engine or a spark ignition engine uh, and a cetane number, uh, the cetane number is typically for diesel fuels and this is uh, usually used to uh, define the quality of the combustion of the fuel. Uh, and uh, in relation to a, a compression ignition engine or a diesel engine for example. Then the second let us say quality which we would like is heat of combustion. Naturally, the amount of fuel which you are burning vis a vis the amount of enthalpy which you are getting out of it. So, of course, whether it is burning completely or not is a different question, but if it burns completely and we uh, only get let us say CO2 and H2O as the end products, uh, then in that case if there is complete combustion, how much enthalpy comes out, what is the heat of combustion or heat of reaction uh, in this exothermic reaction uh, is of importance definitely because higher the heat of combustion per unit mass. So, heat of combustion is enthalpy divided by the kilogram or per unit mass of the fuel or per unit mole of the fuel. So, uh, we, you will have to carry smaller mass of fuel if you have higher and higher heat of combustion and naturally the inventory of this fuel in the vehicle reduces. So, uh, if, you, if you fill in let us say if you have a, a 50 liter tank uh, and you get a high heat of combustion then naturally you can go longer uh, with that 50 liter fuel. So, that is there is a clear relationship between the heat of combustion and the amount of mass which you carry in a fuel tank for example. Then high volumetric energy content uh, which essentially means it is related to heat of combustion in a way that if you burn one mole of fuel uh, then uh, how much energy you will get. So, essentially the density of the fuel comes into picture and therefore, smaller fuel tanks will be required for example, liquid fuels or solid on a volumetric basis. Of course, most of the automotive fuels. Uh, are liquids uh, and then gaseous fuels of course, the volumetric energy content is low, uh, but then uh, there are other advantages because of which uh, uh, let us say uh, gaseous fuels are used. The other thing is high temperature performance and low temperature performance. Uh, as you know most IC engines if they are mobile units for example, in automobiles they have to operate in, in very adverse conditions, you have to sell the same car. Uh, for example, in, 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 in the north northern part of the country, let us say in, in Jammu and Kashmir for example, uh, the, where the uh, winter temperatures may be negative and then you want to start the car, uh, let us say in the morning the car is standing overnight uh, uh, in, in a garage and early morning let us say 5 o'clock uh, when the temperature outside is let us say minus 16 and at that time you want to start it. So, uh, how, how, how do you define it? So, the low temperature performance uh, depends on of course, the volatility of the fuel because as I told you there are several components. Now, not all components uh, they, they vaporize at, at the fixed temperature. Okay? So, there is something called as a distillation curve which we will talk about uh, shortly in the coming lectures. So, the volatility how much is what fraction of the fuel is volatile at low temperatures uh, will determine the ease of cold start for example. Now, because uh, at those low temperatures you have to vaporize the fuel let us say in a carburetor uh, uh, and uh, if the volatility is low at low temperatures then you will not have gaseous fuel and therefore, uh, the, the starting will be difficult. In a, in a similar manner uh, uh, many automobiles have to work in very adverse high temperature conditions also. Uh, for example, military vehicles or even normal automobiles when they operate in Rajasthan for example or in summer time when the outside temperatures can be 45 or even more then the temperature at which uh, the fuel uh, tank is exposed to and the fuel line which connects the tank with the engine uh, th that is also exposed to very high temperatures uh, and therefore, uh, if vaporization happens at that those high temperatures some of the volatile components vaporizes uh, then you may have. Uh, 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 vapor locking conditions that means the your your liquid line may have vapor uh, vapor bubbles in it 
uh, which are generated in the line and therefore, uh, the again the, the vehicle performance will go down the start there may be problems in starting for example, or continuous running also. Uh, there will be uh, the, the, the fuel pumps will have to uh, let us say uh, which are designed to operate with liquid. Uh, there may be gaseous bubbles which are coming in the, way in the fuel pump for example, and you will have trouble in running the engine. Then there are other qualities for example, oxidation stability. That means, uh, you not only have to burn the fuel, but you have to store them. You have to store fuel in, in local fueling stations, you have to store fuel in local distribution stations and at the end you have to store fuel in your car also uh, for quite some time. So, if you fill the car let us say with 70 or 80 liters of petrol, uh, you, you may use it in one month, you may use it in 15 days. So, how does the fuel react with oxygen? Uh, okay, so, if, does it degrade for example? So, fuel degradation under storage uh, can happen. Uh, if the fuel starts reacting with the oxygen in the air or let us say it starts catching moisture for example, uh, from the air and therefore, there may be some deposits, uh, some waxy deposits or oily deposits may come out as a reaction products may not be very good uh, for the running of the engine for example, and you may have formation uh, of such uh, unwanted products which are an outcome uh, of the reaction of this particular uh, uh, fuel with oxygen for example. So, if it is an unstable fuel, then how do you control the deposit formation? That means, many many fuels when they burn, uh, they may produce uh, certain compounds which are not very healthy for example, for the engine. They stick to the piston uh, crown, uh, they can stick to the piston rings uh, and these deposits can also go into the crevices uh, in, in, in an engine for example, in the cylinder liner. Uh, they can choke uh, or they can uh, thwart the movement of the exhaust valves for example, okay. and they in, in turn they can also affect the emissions and the fuel economy. Uh, so, a good fuel uh, will uh, tend to be very stable uh, and then it will also not form the such deposits. Okay. Uh, then of course, uh, depending on uh, what is the mixture uh, uh, of, of, of your petrol or diesel, uh, you have to see the material compatibility because uh, at the end of the day, uh, you have to store this fuel somewhere, you have to transport this fuel through small pipelines and then it has to go to a fuel pump for example, or a carburetor for example, and therefore, the compatibility of the fuel, if the fuel has certain additives or certain uh, compounds uh, which can react let us say with copper or uh, it can react with mild steel, uh, okay, it, can, it can also react with rubber uh, or elastomeric compounds which are frequently used uh, as sealants uh, for example. Uh, in the pipelines, uh, then of course, uh, there will be problems and eventually there will be leakages or, or, or there will be problems in the running of the engine. So, uh, a mater high material compatibility will prevent corrosion and it also saves these uh, rubber and elastomeric compounds which are, uh, which are used uh, at several places uh, in the fuel line or fuel handling systems for example. Uh, and then of course, uh, very, very important is the flow characteristics. Uh, that means, uh, what is the viscosity? Uh, for example, viscosity will be very, very important for fuel injection processes, uh, because viscosity is a very strong uh, function of temperature most of the times. Uh, and if the temperature is not maintained or if the temperature is changing for example, in the environment, uh, then the fuel becomes viscous, uh, let us say in cold climates for example. Uh, and then uh, the, the type of spray or the type of diesel spray which we would like to achieve. Uh, will not be uh, there and therefore, you will have black smoke unburnt, unburnt combustion uh, which will happen in, in the combustion chamber. Uh, so, viscosity is also very important for calculating the pumping pressure for example, uh, then uh, higher the viscosity of course, the amount of work which is required to pump the fuel uh, from location A to location B will uh, with a strong function of viscosity as you all know uh, and therefore, control of viscosity is very, very important uh, for a fuel. Then of course, density. Uh, atomization characteristics, if you make a spray out of out of a liquid, uh, what is the spray size distribution for example, uh, how much energy is required to create good spray, uh, what is the automa atomization characteristics uh, and then of course, the ignition, ignition and combustion characteristics also depend on eventually, uh, they will affect the fuel quality and or, or vice versa. So, essentially, uh, how does the fuel flow? Uh, in, uh, so, what are the thermophysical properties of the fuel, viscosity, density, uh, good atomization, ignition. Uh, so, all these parameters, uh, they affect 
uh, the quality of the fuel or the quality of the fuel affects uh, let us say the engine performance. So, uh, in this lecture we have seen the fuel uh, parameters which are important for uh, uh, the performance of the engine and then of course, uh, all these parameters one has to check for uh, uh, a particular engine and uh, the SI engine as you know uh, is, a, uh, is a fast burning fuel uh, and so it has uh, its own characteristics uh, and uh, the diesel engine or the diesel fuel for example, which we get uh, in the market for let us say running uh, trucks or buses or diesel fuels, uh, they will have their own characteristics. Uh, and then we need uh, special parameters to let us say quantify uh, these uh, parameters. How do you compare one fuel with the other? So, this is very important uh, because uh, mo uh, uh, different refineries, different uh, let us say uh, ke chemical refineries or petroleum refineries, uh, they come up with different blends of fuels uh, and uh, there is a constant research going on to in improve the quality of the fuel in terms of adding some additives. Uh, in terms of their storage, in terms of their viscosity management, uh, in terms of their reaction with the atmosphere for example and of course, in terms of the combustion quality. That means, what is the rate of flame propagation for example, how combustion takes place, how fast the reaction takes place, how quickly the heat, the pressure rises in the engine. So, we need several parameters to compare fuel A or a blend of fuel A with a blend of fuel B for example. And uh, the SI engine characteristics are different as we know than the diesel engine characteristics and therefore, the fuels which are manufactured for running of these particular engines are also differing in their composition as well as their characteristics. So, in the next lectures, we will see uh, what are the SI engine characteristics uh, or fuel characteristics which are used for an SI engine and what are the fuel characteristics for a diesel engine.